Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalo. Thank you for joining us today. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in my. I mean, unless they, I'm not in my studio. That's fine. Yeah, I'm in your workshop. My studio. Uh, studio S. Yeah, your. Uh, th this is the studio annex. This is the the game room. So the studio is in the wall over there. Somewhere over there. Yeah, somewhere over there. Uh, this is the. This is the chaos that happens when you're working on a miniatures-based uh, skirmish game. Correct. I, I would call this the Playtest Design Lab. Okay. Something sure. like that. Something yeah. like that. Sounds this is, legit. This is Will from Ignition Core Games. Uh, I migrated down to Texas. Uh, we've been talking about this for a little while. We've been planning this for a little while. Uh, I was able to get that J&J &J stuff, uh, you know, injected into my body. And so we figured this was a good time to come uh, meet up, uh, show off this game, and, and for me to be able to sit down and get a first look at it. So uh, thank you for letting me invade your house. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, and, and serving me, um, serving me uh, whiskey. So, today we are talking about Ignition Core. Uh, I just had a run through of it. Designers are usually really bad at selling their own product. So, I'm going to go ahead and give a run through to the audience. Okay. And then you can come in with anything that I've missed. Absolutely. Sound reasonable? Uh, yeah, reasonable ish. Ish? Go reasonable ish? Ahead. Are you terrified? Absolutely. Okay. You're an intimidating uh, man, Jesse. Well, I mean, I'll look, I'll take what I can get. I don't get compliments often. I'll take a few of them. This is going to be a tactics-based skirmish game. Uh, you're going to be uh, purchasing and building uh, high-quality resin miniatures that are designed in a sort of sci-fi-esque giant mechs, robots smashing into each other's drop ships, landing troops down on the ground, and you're positioning to do uh, a few things. Take out your opponent's mechs, take out their airships, take out their squadrons, and also position yourself on different regions of your map. If you're familiar with games like Warhammer, this is going to be that similar idea of positioning and control, where you're uh, pushing around the board uh, and sort of giving a big uh, kind of take and go. Unlike some of those other skirmish games, however, this is going to be played over a series of rounds where your uh, teams do not expire. Instead, you respawn, continue engaging, continue your, your tactical movement, uh, and uh, instead of being knocked out of play, you're going to be scoring points by how effective you are. Uh, you have how many different unique squadrons of characters? So right now we have three. We have the okay. Paladin faction, the Oni faction, and the Valkyrie faction. Okay. So and we there's, have a fourth one coming. So there's three unique squadrons of factions with a fourth one on the way, and they're going to be built out of a series of core unit types. You have your uh, kind of little chibi people here who are going to be the uh, people who are going to be scoring you. They're going to be on the ground. They are your troops. They're your force that are coordinating together. You have your drop ships. Your dropships are going to be able to carry a few of your infantry. Uh, they'll be able to move around the battle map. They'll also be able to resupply and stock, provide a little bit of a defense. They're really about positioning and getting your troops or getting your, your uh, models where they need to be. You're going to have your shields. Your shields are going to be uh, sort of tactical guarding units. They don't have as big of mechs as some of your higher end uh, characters, but they're going to be about positioning, layering down uh, cover fire, and making sure some of your smaller troops, which are actually scoring for you, don't get wiped out of the board too quickly. Yep, and then a little nuance to that. A little nuance to that. So these ones here, these are about shielding. That's that faction specific. Um, for this one, it is more of a support by fire roll. Okay. So they are specifically support mix, and like you so were saying, support, but the operating of each exactly. one of them will be different. You can tell the faction that I played before we did this preview. And then we also have our giant mechs, which are going to have a unique pilot inside of them. They're going to be running around the board, destroying everything in their path. Is that accurate? Usually, yeah, generally. Until, unless of course... Unless they roll like you do. Until, of course... I come to your home. I come to your home and this is... Until, of course, you tear them limb from limb by tactical and positional firing. So... That's a general overview of what I have on the board here. Now, let me talk about how it's actually going to play. At the very start of the game, you're going to spawn into your deployment zones, getting ready and setting up your positioning, making sure you're blocked behind different obstacles, and preventing your opponent from, I don't know, destroying your dropship on the first turn? Yeah, that, that would be I mean, that would be, that'd be, that'd be an awful be thing. Nice that'd, be drop a shame. Ship. that'd be a shame if the designer had be that a, happen to him be a shame if because I decided to, to double down on my movement. Next, you're going to move over here to the initiative tracker. The initiative tracker is going to be a unique element of your system here. It's going to be a roll of the dice getting unique numbers that's going to set up the rest of the course of your turn where certain mechs, certain factions, certain groups of your models will act either before or after the other players. 
Uh, so that's going to set up the course of the next turn. You can kind of see what's going to happen. You decide when and where people are going to act depending on what your initiative is. And then you get down to the tactics and skirmish side of things where you're moving across the board, doing your very best to claim zones, uh, dominant regions, and set up your defenses before your opponent gets to go. Uh, I think the last thing I want to go over, and then I'll let you cover everything that I've missed, there's going to be a lot of side elements that I haven't had the chance to experience yet, but they add a little bit of complexity, and they're things that I'm excited about. Uh, you're going to have your leaders, which have unique abilities uh, that can be brought onto the board or incorporated into a faction. You're working on some more uh, thematic scenarios where instead of just a general layout, you have a story that's happening while people play. Uh, and then on top of that, you have all these different factions with different types of uh, potential terrain that you could, in, you could include uh, and different abilities for each of the factions that you're pulling onto the table. Uh, your characters are all going to have uh, certain targetable zones. This is where I think your game turns into a mech destruction game. Uh, I mentioned before ripping this limb from limb. Well, that's legitimately you what happens. Can. You have targetable zones on each one of your mechs with different locations uh, that matter if and when you choose to hit them. If I target the head of the Valkyrie here and I rip that off first, I've made it vulnerable in one of many ways, but I haven't necessarily completely decommissioned it. Right, or you've knocked the cameras out and she's less accurate. Torn off an arm, maybe she doesn't get as much weapons or as much activation, but uh, you know we haven't completely destroyed her yet. That's one of the interesting things about this. Shoot off the tail of the dropship, it's going to spin out of control, but it's going to drop your troops safely on the ground. Take out the core in the very center of it, it's going to explode and everything kind of implodes with it. One is harder to do, one doesn't help you as much. I like that element of this game. I like what you're doing when it comes to uh, what I think a mech game should represent. The idea is being overpowered and super powerful until, of course, you run into a squadron of three or four characters that are able to start ripping you, again, limb from limb. What have I missed? What, what do I need to go over? You covered it really well. Um, Thank you. Well, that's the video. There's Thanks so much for watching. Well, <laughs> no, that's about it. Uh, you covered the vast majority of anything without getting granularly into the well, weeds. Well, start getting into details. What are your favorite parts about your game? What are you the most excited about for uh, kind of people who are paying attention? I'm really excited um, at the base level to get a game I always wanted but could never find. Sure. You know, I always want it... You know, there are a lot of great mech games out there, but they didn't quite scratch that anime itch that, you know, um, the Paladin here does. Very, very obviously expired, uh, inspired by Mobile Suit Gundam. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten into some um, boutique versions of these. So for our Paladin, we have the Holy Paladin, mm -hmm. and he's got the massive martyr shield here. And... Even though it is a sci-fi game, I do want to evoke some fantasy tropes in there as well. You know, we can see the Valkyrie here. Yes, it's obviously a giant robotic suit, but it is also, you know, evocative of the Valkyrie, the mm -hmm. Viking battle maiden. Um, here we have the Daimyo Oni, mm -hmm. and he's got a massive Tetsubo, a samurai helmet. Uh, you can look at that and see, okay, yes, it's a big giant robot, but this is not just something off of the... Hey, 100 years from now, Lockheed Martin, utilitarian mech line. This guy has theme to him. And then on top of that, yep. um, developing a solo co-op RPG mode. So right now we're playing a yep. 1v1 skirmish, yep. and we get to beat the tar out of each other. But I want a meticulously designed system that is fun, immersive, a little punishing at times, where... We would sit on the same side of the table and scratch our head about how we're going to beat the AI system. And this would support one to four players, ideally. So I'm very excited for that. And then, of course, to just keep expanding this core game, bringing more flavor, more models. Um, and yes, bringing a boutique, uh, high-quality game where you really only need eight miniatures to build your faction. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to build 50 or 100 miniatures to get the full experience. So I'm going to ask you this question. And then I'm going to go into why people should be paying attention, why people might be interested in this game. The question okay. I'm asking you is, who is this game wrong for? Who is this game wrong for? If you're a, if you're a hardcore Euro, okay. uh, so you want a game where the dice have zero agency over your fate. 
Sure. Don't buy this game. Yeah, there's a sequence of roles when it comes to shooting, firing, make sure you can connect shots. Similar to KDM in a way where it escalates from point of contact, how much damage are you dealing, and then where is that damage located. Exactly. Yep. Now, I'd like to think this game mitigates the um, the RNG of the dice sure. well, but if you don't want dice to have agency, don't buy this game. Okay. Um, if you don't like assembling models... It's a factor. Um, you do have to assemble these from resin kits. They're high quality resin kits. They're easy to clean up. They still require you to glue models together. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, if that's not your thing, don't do it. Don't. It's a bad idea. If you don't like playing with gray models and you don't want to put the effort in to paint these models, sure. don't buy my game. Sure. Um, and also, if you are trying to buy the cheapest thing you can find. Don't buy my game. These models are spendy. Um, I have compared them to the competition. I believe I am charging less than my competition does, but you are still buying spin cast and pressure cast resin models made in the USA. So yep. um, that means that that increases the price because we pay our workers, you know, um, accordingly over here. Mm -hmm. But you know, these are high quality models and they come at a price. So yeah, yeah if you don't have a and, hobby budget, don't don't buy them. And, don't it, buy and that it game. doesn't apologize for being a, a tactics game. It doesn't apologize for being a skirmish game. I mean, it, it is what it is and it does that very well. Yes. So I, that's sort of a mean question to ask, right? You know, you have the designer sitting next to you and the question that I pose is, who is this not right for? But now I get the opportunity to answer the other side, which if it was coming from his mouth, would be completely invalidated. Of course sure. you like your game. You designed it. You've spent uh, hours and time and blood, sweat, and I'm sure a few tears working on this behind the scenes. Just just a touch. I mean, you don't, you're don't. you in the service. You can't cry publicly, but you can cry a little bit. Mostly when you're working on board games at like 3 a.m. Uh, and you can't quite get the math right on the uh, mech needing to hit. When no one's watching and I'm allowed to snuggle cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So why why should you be paying attention to this? Why am I paying attention to this? Well, first off, I'll be honest. When you first reach out to me, uh, you're talking about a uh, niche within a niche within a niche, right? You're a uh, you're creating a tactics game uh, that requires assembly, requires painting, is a little bit more pricey because of not only the the niche element of it, the product development of it. Uh, but also, I mean, it's just the nature of these type of games. If you get into any sort of lifestyle, uh, you know, Warhammer, Miniatures, Kingdom Death, all of these games require a degree of focus and a degree of quality to justify you investing in them. And right. that first question is always hard to determine. Well, here's the thing. I've been able to travel down. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to come sit next to you and play uh, instead of just reading things online. Uh, and the game's good. It really is. Um, I am compelled and interested in what you have happening here. My favorite elements of it are going to be the, the difference in your squadron here, uh, how everything seems to work together, how they sort of link when it comes to thematic tropes, and then also when it comes to positioning and movement across the board. Uh, I like your mechs. I already talked about how I like the fact that they get ripped apart uh, piece by piece. That is what I think a mech game should do. Uh, and you mentioned that there wasn't other games out there that were fulfilling what you were looking for. You ultimately said, I sort of really want to play this, and so I'm going to spend the time designing it. Yes. Uh, the, what'd you, the, the, what, was the, what was the mech show that you were, you were referencing? Gun -gun -gun -gun? Mobile Suit Gundam is the number one favorite. Yeah. Um, and then behind that, I mean, I love Voltron. Okay. Um, you know. And so if that's a game style, a genre that you're looking for, uh, I think you've done that, right? You've taken something that you wanted to play and you've put it onto the table in a way that you could. When I think of a tactics mech-based game, I think about being able to load my infantry into an airship and then drop them tactically across the board one step at a time. I think about maneuvering and hiding behind obstacles. I think about sniping uh, and kind of cutting off the wing and watching this thing spin into the ground, uh, dropping some infantry or exploding because the because the core of it was destroyed. I think about mechs where the head gets ripped off, but they still keep battling because you can see the little chibi person poking their neck out, and he can see fine. He just doesn't have the extra you know cameras that are equipped on the top. Uh, if this theme, if this style, if this genre of game appeals to you at all, the reason you should be paying attention is because I can sign off on the fact that it's fun, that it's good, that you're not investing uh, hundreds of dollars into a thing that. Uh, and time building and painting and customizing into a thing that you won't be excited or enjoy playing. Um, if you've got a group of guys that, that want to sit down around the table uh, and live out your sort of anime fantasy uh, when it comes to the next generation of sci-fi, um, I think you've done it well. I really do. Uh, Thank you. I'm, I'm 
compelled and intimidated at the same time. Uh, but looking forward to playing more and looking forward to what else you have in store. Because here's the thing. If you invest in a bit of this now, you're still designing, creating, releasing new factions, updating scenarios. Uh, this isn't a one and done. You didn't go to Kickstarter promising some uh, you know, perfect game at launch. Uh, you've instead been working behind the scenes, building your audience, building your base, designing something that is quality when it's handed out and updating as players have you know, given and sent feedback, uh, requesting for changes or giving uh, suggestions around what they think would be fun on the table. Um, and so, you know, he didn't know I was going to say any of that, uh, but I did. Um, yeah, I'm glad I was able to come down. I'm looking forward to playing more of this, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else you have in store. I know you're working on some other designs. Uh, this has me now way more interested in what else you're working on behind the scenes. So for a first look, first impressions, um, you know, hopefully we'll have more content coming down the line, including some gameplay and stuff when I'm able to make it back down here. Uh, this is sort of a quick pit stop. Um, but either way, uh, hopefully three or four of you uh, are now paying attention and following something that you had no idea about before. Um, if that's the case, and if you end up loving the game, uh, I think that's incredible. So thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks for, for showing off your title and for, uh, I mean, I mean, how much work went into this? <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for doing all of it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you have in store. So, anything else you want to say? If you like what you saw, check us out at ignitioncoregames.com. Oh, that's fair. I mean, there's always a link in the yeah, description down, down below. The, I, I figure, click the link in the description. I figure that'll be there. The correct answer was actually quack. Uh, but we won't judge you too hard. Quack. For it. Question mark. Close enough. Okay. <laughs>